Hi everybody, welcome back to this week's My Weekly Rage Fix. Hope you all had a great week. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Teruma, Teruma, in which Hashem in the Torah starts to delineate for Moses and for Betzalel, who was the craftsman for all the different things that were needed in the tabernacle. And um, the Torah goes on in detail about the different items that were put into the tabernacle itself and two of those things I'd like to talk to you about one of them was the Aron, the Ark on top of the Ark there were two, the two Cheruvim, the two angel-like children-like statues that were facing each other and there was also the Menorah and both of them had a special law that was applying by them. And that law was that they both had to be what was called miksha. Miksha tasa osam. That you should, and Rashi explains that miksha means that they should be chiseled out. Take a block of gold and hammer away at it, slowly hammer away at it, and chisel it out until the perfect menorah eventually is the result of that chiseling away. As opposed to making limb by limb and putting them together and making one big menorah, rather chisel it out from a block of gold. And the question is, why? What is the necessity that Hashem wanted, that at least according to how Rashi understands it, that the menorah and the kapores, which was the top of the Aron, the top of the Ark, they should be chiseled out? What's this lesson that we should learn? And one of the um, answers that I was thinking of, and I actually ran this by Rabbi Chagri Preshel, our new uh, dean in the kolal over here, and he and I had both understood as follows, that the Kaporis and the Aron, the Ark, and the Menorah represent Torah. Um, the Pasuk actually says, Va'asu Aron, and you shall make plural. Why is it say you shall make of only one person who is doing it? So our sages learn from it that everybody has to have their chilek, their part in the Torah itself, and everybody has to put forth their utmost effort and the menorah is a light, and the light is uh, the Torah is a, is a resembles that light for us. And um, but the Torah is though is a very delicate thing. It's not just something you can learn on one foot, um, like no other profession. You wouldn't ask somebody to teach you plumbing on one foot. It takes work. And Torah is not just for us a wisdom, or it's, or it's just a profession, um, something that we do between nine to five. Torah is a lifetime achievement and a lifetime work. And we have to be very delicate with how we apply it to ourselves and it has to be chiseled out, and which means that it takes a lot of work and we have to form ourselves and we have to allow the hammers of the Torah to slowly ebb away at us. And sometimes it's a little painful, sometimes it, uh, it's a little tedious, sometimes there's a lot of hard work but at the end, everybody knows that what can result from that hard work, a menorah can come out. The keruvim, the kaporis, the crown of the holy ark could come out of that. And that's exactly what Hashem wants to come out of us. And one other quick idea, our sages teach us that while B'Tzalel actually made everything, but ultimately, miraculously, everything really made it itself. Hashem miraculously did that. He that as Betzal was doing it and actually kind of fashioned on its own with Hashem's help, which is also a lesson for us that all the things that we do, Hashem is really our partner in standing right there with us while it seems that we may be doing it. Ultimately, Hashem is who d does it for us anyway. So these two golden things, they are what, how we will retrieve and receive our blessing and how we can make ourselves and mold ourselves from the piece of gold that Hashem said that we are precious like, but yet on the still on the inside there's something even greater, our inner menorah. And so we have to go get that. I just want to wish you a great Shabbos, and I will talk to you next week, God willing. Take care. Bye-bye.